Well, performance assessments have been around for centuries. Apprentices and journeymen, that whole system was built around performance assessments. Certain skills are easier to assess simply by asking someone to do them. When you go to standardized testing, though, one of the hard things about performance assessments to sort of deliver it and to score it in a way that's just as fair and logistically feasible as multiple choice questions. DTS has a long history of successfully doing performance assessments at a large scale and making it work. ETS tries to look at new ways of assessing people, going beyond the standard multiple choice questions and bubble in responses. One of the most natural ways to collect information about what a person knows is through a conversation. What's new and different about this type of assessment is that the test takers are interacting with simulated students, teachers, parents, and guardians represented as avatars on a computer screen. We have a variety of different types of simulations that we use for a variety of different types of assessments. English language, mathematics, science. In simulations, you're asking a person to do something as opposed to just selecting from a set of multiple choices. The complexity of the simulations really depends on the nature of what it is that you're trying to assess. If the test taker is being assessed on their scientific inquiry skills by how well they interact with a simulated teacher and a simulated peer, you're going to have to have a very complex interactive simulation. These avatars are posing questions to the test taker, and depending upon the test taker's responses, the simulation might go in different directions. However, these avatars are relatively scripted. In more expanded simulations, such as conversation-based assessments of teacher quality, a teacher's ability to elicit information from students, to direct a classroom discussion, or have a discussion with a student's parent could be assessed. In these simulations, the candidate teacher has the initiative in the conversation. They're the ones who are directing where to go. And so it becomes much harder to have a automated avatar because you don't know exactly what kind of questions the test taker is going to pose of the avatar. There, we have a human behind the scenes controlling the avatar, so you have a better chance of making more standard responses. These avatars are not like robots. The interaction that you have with the avatars should feel like you're talking with a real person. They have gestures, they raise their hand, they smile, blink, turn away. If they're not happy with what you're saying, they might lean back, cross their arms ways of interacting that convey emotions in some cases. Very talented people are controlling the different avatars in real time. They're trained in improvisation as well as the underlying structure of the content involved in the particular task and how the students are supposed to respond in different situations. How do you make this into an assessment? How do you create a situation where you can have an interaction to see what a person knows and is able to do? ETS's expertise comes in to make complex performance assessments feasible. ETS would be involved in fleshing out the competencies, connecting to what would be evidence of those competencies, the specific behaviors that you want to look for in an interaction helping to create the classroom scenarios and tasks that would elicit that evidence from test takers, understanding how we would draw conclusions about what the test takers know and are able to do, and then understanding how we would score complex performance assessments. There are many groups involved in this work. Our group, the Cognitive Science Research Group, is making sure that we have a solid cognitive foundation to this type of innovative assessment.